through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 148. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the dictator, mm -hmm. we are going to be talking about solo comic performances. Mm -hmm. You know, films that aren't necessarily just like a monologue or anything yeah. like that, but one actor driving all the comedy mm -hmm. in the movie. Really, it's it's their story. Yeah. They There's are probably obviously going to be supporting cast and everything, but it's more to like support this character performance right. that they exactly yeah. yeah it's just it's really an enhancement mm -hmm. of that character and so to get this started i wanted to go back a long way mm -hmm. to a film that i remember watching when i was a kid sort of mm -hmm. like there are a few things i remember growing up and watching i remember my parents uh introducing me to like rocky and bowinkle mm -hmm. as a kid so i've got a big love of that mm -hmm. Uh, another one that they introduced me to was Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin, who mm -hmm. are a great comedic duo, mm -hmm. but obviously they're a duo, so we're mm -hmm. not going to talk about them. There are any number of ones, you know, we could talk about Flubber or mm -hmm. any of that, but the one that I wanted to talk about was a film called The Bell Boy, mm -hmm. directed, it was uh, Jerry Lewis's directorial debut. Oh, wow. Uh, he made it back in, let's see, was it 1960? He had done a, a film called Cinderella, okay. which was some sort of Cinderella twist. Mm -hmm. and With probably a gentleman. Yeah, and they, and uh, who was it? It was uh, Paramount and wanted to release as their sort of summer film. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to delay it till Christmas. Mm. And in exchange for that, they made him be like, okay, look, if you're going to do that, we need something this summer. Mm. So he came up with this idea, apparently, while he was performing at this hotel and was huh. like, why don't we do this? And he came up with the idea. He wrote the the, play, the screenplay mm. and he directed it and starred in it. Wow. And it's basically the misadventures of this bellhop at a hotel. Uh, you awesome. could sort of think about Four Rooms yeah. sort of in the same vein. Uh, it's not... Or don't blame it on the bellboy with uh, yeah. what's his name from Perfect Strangers? Balky Bronson, Bronson, Bronson Pinchot. Pinchot. Yeah. yeah, it's this one's a little different in the sense that you know he's silent for most of the film mm. until the end. He actually says something, but it's just sort of like all this weird stuff that's thrown at him. Mm -hmm. You know, being in sort of like a Hollywood type area where he has to deal with all these movie stars and all their crazy rich celebrities, rich celebrities and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. In fact. Uh, Jerry Lewis is in the film as Jerry Lewis as well. <laughs> I think it's actually in the beginning where he's like Jerry Lewis and he walks into the elevator and then after that he comes out as the Clever. bellboy and never as Jerry Lewis Clever. again. So it's 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 a fun film. It's funny. It's definitely you know aged. I mean, mm. it's not going to be like slapsticky yeah. to the level yeah. that we've become accustomed to today. Mm -hmm. But Jerry Lewis is one of those guys who had such a profound impact on the way, especially of, like, you know, the solo comedy. Like, yeah, and he physical did, comedy, too. He did Nutty Professor. Yeah. He did... Was that... Is that the same thing? No, yeah. That's, that's Flubber. That was Flubber when... No, those are separate. Those are separate. Yeah. I know. He did he both did Flubber yeah. and Nutty Professor. Mm -hmm. So he was, like... You know, and, and there's all the Dean Martin and Jerry yeah. Lewis stuff on top of that. Like, he was so influential, as you said, in physical comedy, mm -hmm. just in comedy in general. I mean, the French love him for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but a funny guy, nevertheless. I think he's still he's still a funny actor. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that really is interesting to look back on the history of cinema. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a huge... Um, <laughs> a huge... Um, scholar on the history of cinema. I mm. like it mm -hmm. from time to time, but I don't watch a ton of it. Mm. But this this is one of those ones I'm kind of amused with and have sort of a personal connection to, so I definitely appreciate that about it. So yeah. I want to mention it. It's good and to we start might, back with the roots. We might uh, refer to some of his work in other capacities mm -hmm. again as mm -hmm. we go along, so mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Just just something to think about. Just throwing <laughs> that out there. I'm going to jump a couple decades forward to another guy who is incredibly influential in the history of cinema and mm -hmm. that is steve martin yes perhaps his most popular project uh-huh the jerk yes from director carl reiner and I, I would say that this is the kind of beginning maybe not the first instance but definitely the first humongous instance of snl alums becoming 
I don't believe he's an SNL alum, though. I think oh, that's right. Just, You're right. He was just a host. Yeah, he just hosted, he hosted at a time of that. Okay. That was the weird thing. Right. I remember yeah, we that's did that's right. It. I forgot about that yeah. little weird misnomer. But you're right. He he definitely is associated with that, and you can definitely see that influence mm-hmm. of him going forward with all the SNL yeah. movies. This one is funny. Um, initially, when I was looking at the credits and stuff, I was initially really confused because he's credited as Pig Eye Jackson in the movie that's who is credited as uh the actor in the movie not steve martin i was like why am i not seeing steve martin am i am i like have you, did i have a seizure did i forget that like <laughs> the jerk was steve martin i thought it was steve martin that's but, amazing uh it's it's a really it's a really funny story you know of a guy who is a moron mm-hmm. who was sort of born a poor black child born a poor black child stumbles through life accidentally becomes rich Loses all his money, mm-hmm. returns to the life he grew up with, mm-hmm. as happy as he ever could be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's... Steve Martin probably... It's sort of thing, interesting to think about. Steve Martin usually plays, like, the smartest guy in the room. Mm-hmm. So, to have Steve Martin <laughs> yeah. be dumb is, be actually a, is actually a nice change of pace. He does it so well, it's kind of a shame oh, yeah. he doesn't do it more. Uh but it's it's sort of like it definitely is another one that sort of feeds that um, comedic y slapstick sort mm-hmm. of performance. I think, you know, the scene where the, was it the paint oil? Cans. Is it paint cans it, or oil? oil. Can. I think it might be oil. Because yeah. he works at a gas station. Yeah, yeah. Where they're getting <laughs> shot by the sniper yeah. and he's like, oh my God, they're, they're <laughs> yeah. The oil's like, leaking. <laughs> and it's, it, like, that has got to be one of the most popular comedic scenes <laughs> yeah. in the history of film. Like, yeah, it, it, he really had that, um, his. His stupidity and his uh, lack of uh, realizing what was going on around him turned all of the things like it was kind of like a mirror, and all the things around him ended up being so much funnier in retrospect. The fact that he didn't even see them going on, so the fact that this guy's shooting at him and missing and hitting paint can or oil cans and oil is coming out becomes hilarious, not because it's happening, but because he literally. Isn't even picking up on the yeah. fact that someone is shooting a gun at him. And somebody <laughs> who picked his name randomly out of yeah. a phone book, which he's thrilled about finally getting yeah. into. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 hilarious, and it's funny because you know this is also a good one to show you the um, the fact that a lot of the successful solo comedic films have been uh, partnerships that have been ongoing between mm. the director and the star. Interesting. In this case, Carl Reiner and Steve Martin. Mm-hmm. They also did All of Me. Okay. Together, okay. the was it um, that Lily Tomlin? Yes, the yeah. Lily Tom one where the brain yeah. gets switched. Yeah, and you know that's that's those two are probably amongst his best. Besides that, he did Summer Rental, mm. Summer School, Fatal Instinct. Not like great films are mm-hmm. okay. Like I, I'm okay with probably all of them. Probably, mm-hmm. probably Summer Rental is my next favorite amongst <laughs> those three. Then Summer School, then Fatal Instinct. <laughs> but you know it's. Clearly, the best ones are when he worked with Steve Martin, and they're able to achieve something together. Mm-hmm. Their chemistry just works, yeah. and that's something you'll definitely see reoccur with a lot of these yeah. um, comedic ones. Is that you have like a director who gets the co- comic, and a comic who gets the and director, they, and, and they the, work yeah. on a yeah. lot of different projects together. Yeah. Usually, it's two, three, some mm-hmm. odd, multiple time films that yes. they'll make together, and it's yeah, it's it's real interesting mm-hmm. to sort of see that. The next one we're gonna skip another decade forward, and this is really. Uh, an interesting point where things started to take a different turn in mm-hmm. terms of the solo comedic performance, and that is the um, costumey yes. comedic performance, yes. where it's sort of they change their look. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, it actually ended up being very successful. The first one we're going to talk about is Mrs. Doubtfire. Probably one of the more successful ones. Yes, both in the sense that it made 400 million dollars holy balls really? but it also in 93 yeah damn but it also won an academy award for best makeup really it won an academy award for best makeup it won the golden globe for um comedy uh best performance by huh. an actor in a comedy or musical it won best comedy and musical at the golden globes as well it won the mtv award for comedic performance for robin williams <laughs> mtv <It> was, awards <laughs> um won people's choice award for favorite comedy so like people loved it yeah. like loved it beyond what i remembered like i remember enjoying it decently oh yeah but like the fact that it was that successful yeah. amongst all this other stuff is kind of amazing yeah it is i mean i think this was kind of uh this was i wouldn't say the first 
in a while, but this is definitely one of like the resurgence of Robin Williams from after the eighties. Like he hadn't after I don't know how much he had done in film. I'm thinking of it like as the exact opposite. I have to look back on his career to be positive, but I almost feel like this is sort of towards the tail end. Mm. Like I feel like he really started to drop off after Mrs. I mean, Doubtfire. Yeah, I can see that? Um, until he started taking dramatic roles in the late nineties. Yeah, but aughts. even those are, I mean, aren't making four hundred. Oh no, yeah, not not in scale of of how much they're liked or necessarily profitability. I'm just talking about quality. Yeah, but. like he's he's still an interesting, dude. Uh, story of a guy who pretends to be a woman to hang out with his kids yeah, after be a divorce. Nanny. Yeah, and you know, it's funny to think about this winning best makeup. I mean, I guess it's okay. It's also sort of funny to me to think back on Pierce Brosnan being the <laughs> yeah. villain in this movie, yeah. quote unquote the villain, by, the drive-by be- fruiting. Yeah, because he's dating. His ex-wife. Mm, Sally Field, when she Sally still Field. was in the zeitgeist. <laughs> yeah, it's it's also funny to think about, you know, um, this is Christopher Columbus. Oh, know, wow, yeah, that's right. He's super successful. You think about he did the Home Alones. Harry he did the Potter. first couple Harry Potters. I mean, he was involved with things like Goonies. Mm-hmm. You know, the dude has done some stuff in mm-hmm. his time. And so it's funny to think about... a. A four hundred dollar million, four hundred million dollar film on his filmography that people just like forget. Yeah, because he's done so much. Yeah, other they forget that he's stuff. done it. Not yeah. that it's happened, but they're just like, oh yeah, you also did Mrs. Doubtfire. That's right. Yeah, that, that other four hundred yeah. million dollar yeah. film. Like, it's just crazy to think yeah. somebody's that underappreciated. Yeah. You got a lot of people before they were like um, big, like Matthew Lawrence, Joey Lawrence's yeah. brother was in there. Yep. I mean, granted, he's right. kind of like. Still. sporadically around <laughs> uh mara wilson back when she was around yes that's young right. child actress mm-hmm. she was a huge thing back then mm-hmm. you know karina karina and mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. um but i you know i guess i come down on i enjoy the film but the ultimate sentimentality of the end of it sort of takes away from the quirky mm. comedy of it for me. See, I felt like the sentimentality is probably what makes it so popular. Oh, I bet you're right. It's not just like, look, it's a man dressed as a woman. Oh, you're ho, right. ho, ho. It's, it's like, that's it, he, he would have been anything. He would have been a clown if necessary. You actually reminded me, we probably should have talked about Tootsie, mm, which is a very... Yeah. I, I mean, that's, I believe, an Academy Award winning Best yeah. Picture film. It's true. Um, about, you know... A super actor. Sorry. Pretending to be sorry, a woman. So, yeah. Where was I? When- oh, <laughs> sorry, MacGuffin fans. You can write in the comments about your love for Tootsie. Oh, it's we haven't excellent. talked about Tootsie not too long ago. Yeah, that's true. It's an excellent film as well. Same See sort it. of idea. Yeah. Much further back in time, mm-hmm. though. Late uh, 70s, I think. Yeah, probably yeah. mid to late 70s. Yeah. Great film. Great mm-hmm. film. Uh, next year, another film that involved a lot of costume work yes. was. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, yes. starring Jim Carrey, his breakout performance mm-hmm. from director Tom Shadyak, hmm. who, not necessarily a name you might recognize, Sorry, but Tom. he did this, he did Liar Liar. Oh, okay. Again, you're talking about the collaborations. Yeah. yeah. He did uh, Bruce Almighty. Okay. He did Evan Almighty. Mm, all he right. did Dragonfly. He did mm. Patch Adams. Again, I guess okay. that's another one that sort of would venture into that single yeah, comedic kinda. performance, yeah. though it gets a little dark. But, you know, there's a lot of... There's another thing he did, which I won't raise yet, because that comes up later. Okay. But, you know, Ace Ventura... Um, so good. It was good, but, you know, it's funny. As much as I like the comedic Jim Carrey, I think I like the serious Jim Carrey more. Hmm. I love... Yeah. Um, Eternal I, Sunshine. I love Eternal Sunshine. I love Truman Show. Mm-hmm. You know, I love The Majestic even. Yeah, like okay. I just I yeah. feel like he's a really talented actor and yeah, you know, he's funny as a comedian. And it's funny because, you know, I remember this film being huge. I mean, I oh, guess yeah. I guess it only made a hundred million dollars. Wow. Which is surprising. Weird. Maybe but, it was just the age we were when it came out. It was huge to us. Yeah, could be. But I remember, I I mean, I think it was just only a few films after this, he was making $20 million a film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know... He blew up fast after this. It's 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 funny to this think and about. The mask both came out pretty close to each other. Yes, and that's the important thing because you know, it was funny that this film he got a nomination for best comedic performance at the MTV Awards, mm-hmm. but but at the same time it was nominated for worst new star for his work in this <laughs> Dumb and Dumber and The Mask, all within the same like year. <laughs> 
those are all such good movies. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. I kind of, I'm kind of amazed that the Razzies really shat on him so much because I don't, I, I didn't think of that. At they all. must have been like, oh, his style of comedy will never last. And it must to have a certain been. extent, it didn't because he didn't do it that long. Yeah. Before he started moving to com comedic stuff after Ace Ventura too. I mean, to uh, more serious stuff. I mean, Liar Liar is pretty crazy. Well, yeah, I but mean, I mean, like, it's not as much Jim Carrey. Well, actually, it is. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, you kind of, you kind of, he's definitely yeah. tapered off yeah. to a fair extent. But you're right. It's, it's not the over the top. Jim Carrey is less, has less demand than it did in the '90s. Yeah, That's I mean, sure. that was all he was doing in yeah. the '90s, and yeah. you know, I can understand on that aspect being like, okay, dude, you're always just this like. But that's like why we loved Chris Farley. So yeah, it's I like, mean, come on, it's it's hard it's hard to like get on him for doing that because he does it so well. I mean, yeah. he's in terms of like best physical actors, he yeah. might be the best physical slapstick actor yeah. going that's at currently this point. Alive, like, yeah, I mean, I can't think of anyone who I think of is better. I mean, I'd be hard pressed. Yeah, to. but I mean, this is a fun film. Mm -hmm. You know, story about a guy who's searching for the Miami Dolphins mascot, which has been kidnapped, which has been kidnapped. Uh, I'd have to think, but maybe my favorite, uh, Sean Young performance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, she's great as uh, Lois Einhorn, <laughs> yeah. the lieutenant detective in the Between film. Between this and Blade Runner. We'll just put them both mm, up yes, there. Yes, that's true as well. Uh, Tone Loke. Yeah, that's him right. That. What a random, like, <laughs> I can't even believe he did this film and then just completely disappeared for me entirely. And Courtney Cox before she was like. That's right, yeah. Courtney Cox. Like, this yeah. was right around the same time as Friends was before getting she rolling. Was the Cox. Yeah. I don't actually know if she even still is. I just want to say Probably not, that. but, you know, I, I, I hold a special place in my heart for yeah. this one. Um, not I a film would... that I go back and rewatch a lot, but, you know, if it's on TV, I'll watch a little bit of it. Yeah, uh, I had a, someone I went to high school with who basically changed their entire persona to be like Jim Carrey, dressed like him, walked and talked like him. I know. Knew the, like, that... the tricks. Yeah. He would, drove his car with his head out the window. Oh, people, the yeah, people really flip, got into like, that, yeah. Like, he, like, for years, like, through most of high school, like, most people forgot, stopped knowing his actual name. It's good that he was dedicated to yeah, it. Yeah, he's being a character actor. Yeah, what can good. we say? Yeah, it's what um, the segment's about. <laughs> the next, <laughs> let's see, two years later, mm -hmm. there was another film. Um, again, another makeup kind of driven film. Remake uh, of a Jerry Lewis. Remake of a Jerry Lewis film. Um, by directed by Tom Shadyak. Uh huh. The trifecta is coming together. <laughs> Worlds are colliding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tripod. Yeah. Um, the Nutty Professor, mm -hmm. starring Eddie Murphy. Um, I would argue the possibly the peak of, like, you know, his notoriety and also the point at which he crossed that threshold from, <laughs> like, the last entertaining to <laughs> obnoxious. Even though I will put out, even though I'm not a huge fan of it for my wife's sake, Daddy Daycare. It's tall, yeah. yeah. But um, still, this is probably the last really good Eddie Murphy. This is movie. when he changed from like outrageous Eddie Murphy, you know, like yeah. Beverly Hills Cop Eddie Murphy, yeah. 48 Hours Eddie Murphy, yeah. to like more family friendly, more sort of outfit, multiple mm -hmm. characters Eddie Murphy. Yeah. I mean, he played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different characters, it looks mm -hmm. like, in the film. Story, you know, of a. a professor who is fat creates a serum to make him thin mm -hmm. he gets a different sort of Jekyll and Hyde persona yep. ultimately decides he prefers who he is to begin with mm -hmm. and you know he has to deal with trying to stop this other hot Jekyll Hyde Hyde, Hyde. yeah Mr. Hyde, Hyde persona that he's Doesn't created have Jada Pinkett it does she was the she first was Smith before she was uh, Jada Pinkett Smith yeah I believe it was yeah it was right around that time yeah yeah Good memory. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Chappelle, too. Oh, yeah. Like, it, one of his first... I think that was actually... That's pretty early on. No, I, if I remember correctly, that was his... Um, he was, a, like, a nobody when that happened. Like, that happened. I think that might have been his first film. Like, his film debut. Or, like, something along that line. I remember reading something about that, where he was, like, a nobody comic, and Eddie Murphy saw him and grabbed him for the purpose of that movie. Yeah. So, like, oh. really. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Yeah. It also has Larry Miller as the dean of the school. Mm -hmm. What a shock. Larry Miller playing an obnoxious principal in a movie. That is unheard of. I'm pretty sure I can't list at least five other films <laughs> on my hands that he's done that exact same part of. Like, that's crazy. Um, let me throw some other information at you that might... Develop might a little, stick. Let's throw some, throw some globs Might develop info. a little trend in your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm ready. First up, won the Academy Award for... Makeup? 
Oh my god! No way! You're, you're, you're dropping some knowledge know, bombs on me. I'm just I'm reading your mind. It won the People's Choice Award mm -hmm. for best comedic performance. No comedy. Oh, okay. Motion picture. Uh, Same vein though. Okay. It was at the MTV Awards, nominated for best comedy. No, best comedic Damn performance. It. Damn it! Close, close. <laughs> Seems a little bit similar mm -hmm. to Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm -hmm. No, like yeah. And this is what, like, how many years later? Three. Wow, that's not that long. No. Felt like longer in my life. No. Do you know it's like there's a much bigger trend going on in the nineties than we ever realized as yeah. kids? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I always it's a funny thing about to me, like I always complain about the Oscars, how the English patient, um, Titanic and Shakespeare in Love mm. all won yeah. Best Picture in consecutive years. I was like, well, crap, there's a formula yeah. to win that. Well, <laughs> that wasn't the only formula going on in Hollywood at that time. So, my bad on that. Yep, there's always some formula going. It's just whether or not we're aware of it. I just hope someday Eddie Murphy goes back and does something more like Beverly Hills Copy. Oh, I thought you were going to say something good. Beverly Hills Copy. No, I mean, good. just that he goes back and does yes. something good, not specifically That's what I naming anything. No, I don't, I don't even <laughs> like that. I don't okay. even speak uh, yeah. Though I hear Tower Heist was sort of more down that road again. Mm -hmm. I'm encouraged slightly, but... I'm not, because Brett Ratner. Yeah. <laughs> Worse than out for that. Following year after that, mm -hmm. another one that involved costumes. Uh-huh, and multiple and characters. Multiple characters. Austin Powers, International mm -hmm. Man of Mystery. The... Mike Myers story about a international spy mm -hmm. who's frozen in time and awoken many years later who has to defeat a international villain uh -huh. that uh, he had fought back in the day mm -hmm. uh, to save the world, basically. Yes, but, uh, James Bond spoof. Yes, directed by Jay Roach mm -hmm. of uh, Meet the Parents yep. fame. You know, Mike Myers and Austin Powers is one of those things that was... It's funny to think about, okay, let's see, this made... I feel like a lot less than I thought. It made... it's, it's it's weird the parallels between it and the Nutty Professor, where it's like you know first came out really popular, really liked sequel not so much. Then actor kind of continued to try to do that and didn't succeed yes. for films and films mm -hmm. afterwards. You're absolutely right. It's kind of weird to realize they were so close together. The thing I was gonna say is that for me, especially with this, like I think the first Awesome Powers was enjoyable. Oh yeah. Um, and it really hit home, though, with the second one. I remember seeing the second one theatrically and watching it and enjoying it. But then upon repeated viewings, yes. I was like, this is not funny at all no, to it's, me. It's really like, tired, it's, like, very it's, quick. Well, it's it. really, this is the one that hammered home the idea of shock value comedy. Yes. Where it's sort Lots of like, of fat bastard. it was so shocking and funny that first time. But once yes. that shock is gone... All the comedy has mm -hmm. gone too, and you know, unfortunately, you're right. He really sort of became um, obsessed with that in some yeah. way. I mean, I guess you could argue, you know, he found Shrek and found yeah, success with that. Yeah. Though I would argue Shrek has the same problem mm -hmm. that the first time you see it, it's like, ah, that's funny. Yep. And then progressively, funny. You should mention that too because Eddie Murphy is in that as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, oh my God. You're yeah. Right. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, just, Ooh, it's all oh gone. God. Oh, God. Oh, that explains ah. so much. It's like a realization. <laughs> Revelations. Oh, my God. Nothing. I feel like I've been in therapy for oh. years instead of I was like, my dad molested me or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like yeah. I feel like I finally unearthed that weird troubling thing I've been my carrying around My mother beat years. me as I was a child. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm okay. I can be happy as a person going Spencer's forward. Spencer's mother did No, mother, none of this stuff actually happened to me. No. <laughs> Disclaimer. That was all just saying, like, it was a breakthrough therapeutically <laughs> something it's just yeah it's crazy and it's so big you know it yeah. won best villain at mtv it won best dance sequence nominated for best movie nominated for best comedic performance mm -hmm. like people love them i so mike myers i remember this being one of the first comedies that i was tired of before i saw it because oh, yeah. it was so overexposed overexposed and quotable and I was in high school, so everyone was, yeah, baby, every single friggin' person I met. And before I saw it, I was, even the first one was like, I'm just done with this. But I mean, you know, the first one was good. And then... No, you're right. So it was so overexposed. But So, so overexposed. Yes. Uh, funny thing to note, mm -hmm. which I only noted after looking at it on IMDb, Demi Moore, producer. Huh. Don't know what that was all about. Somebody write in, let me know if you do, because that's kind of a quirky <laughs> just, uh, connection. Dipping her finger in the producing pool there. Maybe she's a friend of Mike Myers. I don't know. It's weird. Weird. Probably. Uh, because of what we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, 
this week, mm -hmm. being the dictator, yes. I wanted to also talk about Borat, yes. which stars Sasha Baron Cohen, is yes. a character-driven film yes. as well. and it's probably still, to this day, his most successful of his yeah, single oh, yeah. projects. I mean, Not counting the general popularity of the Ali G show, right. I would say that Borat is probably his biggest success. Yeah, I mean, it's fair. Interesting. Um, directed by Larry Charles, who has directed all his theatrical okay. films. Interesting. Again, um, with the collaboration. Bruno, the okay. dictator, exactly. Interesting as well. Uh, producer, J. Roach. Huh. Interesting. Um, also interesting, writer, Todd Phillips. Oh, wow. Of uh, Wow. Todd Phillips Hanger. was one of the writer writers for this? Apparently. Wow. Maybe it's a different Todd Phillips, huh. but... News. Interesting. Um, anyway, you know, as well, I mean, there's like eight writers well, yeah. on this thing. <laughs> but it's, I mean, Borat was one of those sort of cultural phenomena. Yes. That, I mean, it's, I guess you could argue that any of these films sort of have those things where they become so popular mm, that it's over mm -hmm. with Austin Powers. Yeah, yeah. baby. Uh -huh. Is this? Yeah, like exactly. everyone was doing this. Yeah. Like yeah. all the time there for a while. And that fucking single. Mankini thing he wears. Yeah. So, yeah. But it was so clever. I remember seeing the trailer of it and not know. I mean, I was vaguely familiar with the LAG show yeah. at that point. Like, I was not like uh, absolutely yeah. fanatic about mm -hmm. it or anything. But I guess like, I thought it was funny. And I saw that trailer and I was like, this looks like <laughs> the most bizarre, mm -hmm. funny film ever. Like, where they, he loses the chicken on yeah. the, the subway uh -huh. and stuff like that. I yeah. was like, this is funny. And that doesn't even scratch the surface because, you know, the fight sequence in that movie yes. has got to be one of the most memorable fight sequences yes. ever. In fact, yeah. I think, was it MTV at one, or was nominated for Best Fight. Mm -hmm. um, he, you know, it's funny to think about, like, you know, um, Jason what, Siegel. A commitment to a character. Right, but, like, you think about Jason Siegel being willing to do full frontal for yeah. comedy. Sasha Baron Cohen was doing it long before Jason Segel. He's, He's wrestling still, with another naked man. Yeah, like, like he <laughs> he took it to a level that was so much further than yes. Jason Segel ever has. And 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 I would think that you know based on, I feel like this movie was the perf. It was like the apex of, um, new ideas that Sasha Baron Cohen had mixed with a relatively low exposure rate. Like, mm -hmm. he still wasn't oh, so, yeah, totally. so huge. This was that perfect moment for him where he could... Most people didn't know his shtick enough that both in the filming of it and in the release of it, there was a lot of surprise and unexpectedness. And it's interesting to think about, especially when you think about, like, Bruno. Mm -hmm. But, like, I feel like this one... Um, the comedy was the most natural. Like, mm, Bruno yeah. at times felt no. a little forced. Yeah. I don't know I if it's totally because he was so exposed he couldn't get those moments yeah, like he did out of here. People. Yeah, that's true. Or yeah. if he just, I don't know, whatever, everything worked out yeah. with this one. Just it's the way funny. the character was developed or what have you. Well, it's funny to think about, though, because this, uh, Borat was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Whoa. Writing for Adapted Screenplay. It was wow. nominated for a Writer's Guild Award. And that's funny to think about, because I really think of it almost as sort of like... Like Candid Camera. Yeah, exactly. Like... I guess, I mean, the character is sort of created, and there's mm -hmm. funny s circumstances yeah. set up, but it almost feels like much more like an improv-type yeah. movie. So it'd actually be interesting to see how much of that was written. Totally, yeah. Like, even if it's just what he Sasha says. Baron Cohen would be saying, yeah. it's still, like, so fascinating. pretty I'd be, commitment. I'd be very interested. I mean, yeah. I'm a huge fan of it. I mean, oh, he yeah. won Best Comedic Performance at MTV's Movie Awards, which was well-deserved. I mm -hmm. mean, it's definitely my favorite project of his yeah, but you know i would agree it's, it's good yeah it's nice it's nice it's <laughs> more i would say i guess I suppose but that brings us to this wednesday mm -hmm. the 16th. 16th yes good doing that math in yeah here. yeah um adding one to the dvd yeah good oh, that's, that's the smart way i was i was going to the friday and then trying to subtract you did it the smart way see that's that's thinking outside the box this friday or wednesday wednesday uh, <laughs> uh we have the dictator yeah uh, starring Sasha Baron Cohen, directed yeah. by Larry Charles. Uh, original, based on, or loosely based on a, b a book written about Saddam Hussein. Yes, yes. I forget what it was originally called, but that's what the original concept was taken of, was a a book written about Saddam Hussein by either a Saddam Hussein supporter or like a ghost writer mm. or semi-autobiographical, I forget. But it's about a dictator who, you know, is, uh, and I've seen this, so I'll give a mm. brief, Ooh, brief yeah. Uh, 
and you can you can, read, you can read my review on the MacGuffin already, so it's not really a sneak preview. Um, but basically, a dictator Wait, take the mystery out of it. <laughs> <laughs> who is brought to New York to sort of stand in front of the UN mm -hmm. uh, for nuclear is nuclear weapons program. Okay, at which point he is. Uh, removed from power by people within his government, sort of mm. a prince and a pauper type thing, mm. and he wants to fight to get back into power mm. and regain dictatorship over his country. Mm. Now, circumstances ensue and <laughs> hijinks. Hijinks. Um, funny movie though. I really, I really, I, I thought it. I thought there was definitely funny scenes in it, uh -huh. but it wasn't as cohesive as something like Bruno mm. or sorry, or, Borat. Or what? It, I mean, it's they're funny moments, but it again felt like he was trying too hard at other mm. times, and overall, it felt like the story was very sort of thin. Now, was um, it more uh, the like shocking people in public of Borat, or more scripted? Like, good thing you brought that up. It is more scripted. In fact, mm. uh, I was telling you before we filmed this, I thought in fact it paralleled uh, Ali G into House, mm. the Ali G movie, much uh -huh. more than the other two because that was completely scripted. Mm -hmm. This one, this is completely scripted. I mean, okay. this one stars Anna Faris. Yeah, it doesn't have like no, Ben Kingsley or something. Ben in Kingsley it. Yeah. is in it. Megan Fox is it in it as herself. Mm. Um, John C. Riley's in it. Like it's totally, it's totally scripted. Um, and it's about, you know, a politician who isn't particularly good at his job, that wacky yeah. things ensue, well. who ultimately grows up and begins to understand himself more. Pretty much exactly what Allie G in well. the house is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's funny. I, I will definitely not say it's not funny, but I think this one's going to have probably the hardest time finding an audience because, like, the other ones, you know, dealt with things like racism, sexism, mm -hmm. uh, religious persecution, stuff yeah. like that. And even that, you know, people are able to laugh out. Yeah. This one makes fun of like 9/11, terrorism, mm. you no know, stuff like that. Yeah. That I really think there's going to be a, a lot of parts of the country that are going to be turned off by. Gotcha. If you're willing to maybe not, maybe that'll make it popular. People will hate it so much that it'll maybe, be one of those things that the hate of it will maybe. rise the cultural and, You know, if you're able to sort of take that all with a grain of salt, mm. you might be able to enjoy it, but I, I wonder how it's going to be responded to mm -hmm. by audience. I think some will love it, and I think some will hate it. Gotcha. Much more to an extent than his other stuff even has. Um, Interesting. And I should note, one one really nice thing people should keep their eyes out, or yeah, I guess in this case, ears out for. Okay. Soundtrack is really fun. Really like really? the soundtrack. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Nice. Um, with that being said, I guess that is it for this episode. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned for our next one, where we talk about alien invasions mm -hmm. in honor of Battleship. <laughs> Um, you, can... you sunk my horrible movie. <laughs> I don't think we'll be able to sing Battleship as much as we might try. Yeah. Stay tuned, though. Let us know your feedback at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Phone number 323-761-9842. iTunes, Blip, Roku, Miro. We're on Get Glue. Check in. Leave us reviews on iTunes. We Please appreciate do. it. And uh, enjoy the dictator. We'll see you next time. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.